My Aligarh education prepared me for the remarkable journey from India to the United States of America. I went to the United States in pursuit of American dream. And with the help of other, I achieved it. I'm fortunate. I'm uniquely blessed. And my dream has come true. In large part, I owe it this to Sasiya Dhamad Khan and to Aligarh Muslim University. What's best in me, I owe to Aligarh Muslim University. Aligarh Muslim University still lingers in my mind. It has never faded away from my memory. It is, just, it is, it is uh, it's still fresh in my mind, in my thought, and in my spirit as it was long years ago. I remember riding my bike from Medium Hall to all over the campus. It was an exciting part of my life. Memory remains in dairy. So I also owe to my Aligarh education the deep understanding there is much more to, to life than one's personal success. The values that Aligarh helped shape in me include a passion and love for education, eternal optimism about one's hopes and dreams. I know Aligarh remains to be a beacon of hope and aspirations and dreams. Being cordial and candid towards all, keeping steadfast to standards of excellence, living in peace and harmony by being tolerant and respectful of the dignity of each person. I know that these values and others have been imprinted on you as well. We, we are gathered here at a time when a purpose-driven education such as that provided by Aligarh Muslim University have never ever been more important. Over the years, men and women from Aligarh have made significant contributions in all walks of life. Their paths have been different, but the common and transcendent bond that has united them has been a belief in and commitment to equal justice and shared sense of humanity. The combination of technical expertise and moral rectitude has enabled the graduates of Aligarh Muslim University to make their mark in the world and serve as ambassadors and positive role models for others. We are living in a troubled and troubling time. We are living in a divisive and self-centered time. Now more than ever, it is imperative that students receive an education that prepares them to be an entrepreneurial leader. Leaders who understand that doing the right things Working with others to solve problems, giving back is more important than what one accomplishes individually. An Aligarh education meets the, meets the test and more. An Aligarh, produce, an Aligarh education produces graduates who are empowered individuals who are fully equipped to become entrepreneurial leaders and civically engaged. Let me just tell you a little bit about entrepreneurial leadership. As you know, I'm an entrepreneur, so I love to talk about it. So just as education's empowerments intertwine, so are the concepts of entrepreneurial leadership. <coughs> entrepreneurial leadership is the key and the bridge to the future. Let me start with the concept of entrepreneurial leader and by defining entrepreneur. Who and what is an entrepreneur? There are various definitions. The one that appeals to me the most to me is the entrepreneur is a person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. I like that definition because it emphasizes any enterprise and extends the definition beyond just the business owner. A person can be an entrepreneur in any type of organization as long as he or she is willing to step up to the plate and take a leadership role to shape the direction of the enterprise or the portion which or she controls. In that regard, let me share one another definition that applies. The definition is entrepreneurship provided by Professor Howard Stevenson of the Harvard Business School almost 40 years ago. Professor Stevenson said, and I quote, entrepreneurship is the pursuit of opportunity without regard to resources can be controlled. In other words, entrepreneurs are not constrained in their thinking. Let me combine these two definitions of my own definition of entrepreneurial leader. 
Entrepreneurial leaders are dreamers who dare. They are seekers who seize the moment and have calculated risk to create the enterprise and the jobs of the future. Taking it one step further, entrepreneurial leaders do the right thing. As the old American saying goes, managers do things right, leaders do the right thing. To put it another way, the entrepreneur sees the pursuit of possibilities as being as doing the right thing, the entrepreneur leader does the right thing. This is true of entrepreneurial leaders in all fields, the government, religion, healthcare, education, yes, even business. Working within that context, in my opinion, the entrepreneurial leader is a person who recognizes that becoming an entrepreneurial leader is a journey and, and invest the time to make that journey in a meaningful and thoughtful manner without taking shortcuts along the way. I firmly believe the entrepreneurial leader is a person who recognizes that leaders are made, not born. A leader are made, not born. And I'm one of the living examples of that. I was not born in a rich family, as some of you probably have. I was born in a very humble and middle class religious family. My religion, Islam, believes in equality, dignity, tolerance, and respect for other faiths. And my last name is Islam. You probably think I'm doubly blessed or doubly cursed, but I believe I'm doubly blessed because Islam brings the people together, and especially in this country, we need to build a stronger, fairer, just, tolerant India. And if we are stronger together, we can help shape a better future for India. So Alingar Muslim University prepares the students for their journey. My wife Debbie and I recognize that and it is why we funded the development as what Jihudin said, a Frank and Debbie Islam Management Complex at Aligarh Muslim University. How many, uh, how many of you have gone to that management complex? It's one of the most, it's one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. Even oh, President Obama looked at it and he said, wow, man, this is really good. And he's from Chicago, so what else do you expect him to say? Man, this is really good. And I was here to inaugurate, as Wajib Dean said, Frank and Debbie Islam Auditorium at the Mass Communication Department School of Journalism. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of the unrest of Wajib Dean said, I was not able to go. The governor asked me not to go because he cannot guarantee my safety or security. So we are trying to come back, and at this time I'll bring my wife, because her name is there. And, and hopefully in the month of October, on such a day, I'll be the chief guest and I hope all of you will come and join me in the journey. So let me say what I said and what you Dean said that. But I want to add a little bit more what I said. At the dedication of the complex, the management complex, I stated, or our overriding motivation in supporting the management complex is because of the emphasis it will place and preparing the students at Aligarh Muslim University to become entrepreneurial leaders who will engage in activity that will create jobs, build prosperity and opportunity for thousands of thousands of people throughout India in other parts of the world. My wife Debbie and I also have provided considerable financial support close to $500,000 to build Frank and Debbie Islam Auditorium at AMU Mass Communication Department. As I said, we were not able to inaugurate it. And the reason we did this is because of our deep commitment to democracy and the freedom of press. 